the chimpanzee was not looking at the man. The man could see that he had found whatever he had been digging for, but the chimpanzee quickly put it away as the man walked around him to see what he was holding. The chimpanzee was keenly interested in this thing, but when the man got a sneak peek at it, he was scared for his life. Hello and welcome to Amazing Animal Stories. Today's story is about a chimpanzee who starts digging every day, but when Lucas notices something sharp in his hands, he was shocked. However, before we begin our countdown, we would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel Amazing Animal Stories and also press the bell icon. Let's get started. Because of his past, Lucas knew that some people might have doubts about his career choice. His mother was an art performer and his father was a well-known doctor in the area. Even though both of his parents had well-respected jobs, he wanted to pursue a field aligned with his needs and goals. Lucas Carlson lived in Kristiansand, which is a city in Norway. It was a small neighbourhood where everyone knew each other well. When he told his parents what he wanted to do, they were shocked because every family has a reputation to keep up. Lucas wasn't interested in a theatre or medicine. He had always been interested in strange animals. When Lucas was a small child and went to the Christian San Zoo, he became interested in animals he had never seen before. He immediately decided to follow a passion that would help him get to know them better. After he finished high school, he got a job at the same zoo he had gone to as a child, making his dreams come true. But he didn't know how dangerous getting so close to the animals could be. It was not a glamorous job by any means. He had to clean up the animals' mess, but he could also feed them by hand, and this part of his job made him very happy. Lucas liked going to visit one species more than any other. He knew that because it was a rare species, he would never be able to see it anywhere but in Africa and Asia. In reality, neither Norway nor most of Europe had any similar species. Lucas fell in love with a chimpanzee named Isaac. After poachers killed Isaac's parents in a terrible way, the Christian San Zoo offered to take him in. Lucas had been caring for Isaac for a few months, feeding and getting to know him. But soon after, he observed something strange in the chimpanzee's behaviour. He used to be a happy chimpanzee, but then he started behaving bizarrely and was only interested in digging. This behaviour began modestly. He would dig some mud out with his bare hands. Lucas thought he was bored or looking for worms. He would have tried to help if he had known what was happening. Isaac started digging habitually over the next few weeks. He ate and slept very little. He had improved his tools and all he wanted to do was dig. He was no longer using his hands. Instead, he found a stick that worked much better than his hands. With the help of the stick, he dug deeper than he had ever been able to before. Isaac seemed obsessed with something strange. His eyes had an unusual expression which made Lucas worried about him. Lucas wondered if his eccentric behaviour was the result of some illness. He knew he had to do something. By the time Lucas got permission to go into Isaac's enclosure and see what he was doing, Isaac had already found what he was looking for. Lucas had no idea that his life would be changed forever from this point onward. When he went around the chimp to look at what he was holding, the chimp quickly hid it. The thing had become the chimpanzee's obsession, but as soon as Lucas got a sneak peek at the artifact it held, he feared for his life. At first, Lucas could only tell that it was a sharp object. He moved back a little to make room for Isaac as he didn't want to get hurt by the sharp thing the chimp was carrying but Isaac decided to show his zookeeper what he was holding when he saw fear in his eyes. Isaac put out his hand and showed Lucas what was on it. Lucas was shocked by what he was seeing. It had come from the Vikings and would be at least a thousand years old. It turned out to be an arrowhead. Lucas could tell it was an old thing. Before the zoo was built, it must have been buried and forgotten. He thought about how a Viking from a long time ago must have owned it. Norway was one of the first places where ancient people lived, so the Viking would likely to have looked a lot like Lucas. Lucas knew he had to show Isaac's discovery to someone. Lucas knew that his chimpanzee friend had been obsessed with finding it, so he wouldn't just give it to him quickly. But then Lucas had an idea, and he talked with Isaac. Isaac finally got the arrowhead in exchange for a bunch of bananas and other fruits. Lucas could now get the arrowhead checked out, so he asked a man named Bjorn Peterson from the University of Adgar to look at the arrowhead. He was a professor of archaeology and was able to tell him a few things about the object. 
it was exceptional and he told Lucas that it was made around 2000 years ago, during the Iron Age. It was 4.6 inches long and a hunter at the time would have been proud to use it, but now Lucas was in a tough spot. What should he do with the ancient artifact? He was confused about whether he should give it to a museum or keep it as a souvenir for himself. There was also another possibility. What if he sold it to a collector with a lot of money? Finally, Lucas made a decision and asked Peterson for an excellent appraiser's name. The professor sent him to Mr Erickson, a well-known archaeologist who got tired of the academic world and went into the appraisal business. After looking at the arrowhead for a while, Mr Erickson told Lucas that, on the collector's market, the arrowhead could be worth about $200,000. That was more than Lucas would make at his current job at the zoo in four years. Now that he knew how much the item was worth, it was even more challenging for him to decide what to do with it. When Lucas got home, the first thing he did was call his parents. He told them about his find and what the appraiser had said about it. After they heard the details, they quickly encouraged him to sell it. His dad said, Don't be stupid and think about what you could do with that much money. His dad suggested he could put the money in the stock market or start his own business. If he wanted, he could start an animal related business. Do you want to keep getting paid peanuts at the zoo for the rest of your life? His father insisted. Lucas didn't know what to say. He liked his job, but what his dad said made him stop and think. He decided to sell the item after he thought about it for a while, but what he planned to do with the $200,000 had nothing to do with investments or starting a business. He didn't see himself as a CEO or someone who got rich by investing in stocks, but he knew what he wanted to do with the money. Lucas wanted to use the money to pay for his schooling. He would get a bachelor's degree in zoology in Oslo, and then he would try to get a PhD in primatology at an American university. So he could study apes for the rest of his life and make his parents proud at the same time. The next day, he told his parents about it and they were very happy with his choice. This is not the first time something like this has happened. Sometimes, animals can be archaeologists' best friends and they can help them find unique ancient items that would otherwise have remained undiscovered forever. What do you think of this story? Let us know your views in the comment section below. We hope you found this story very interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with others. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel, Amazing Animal Stories. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new uploads.